Oh man, guys, we got some big news in the tech career space, and I'm going to share that with you guys today. Trump has named Elon Musk to lead the Department of Government Efficiency. Now, many of you guys are probably going to say, Antoine, what does that have to do with tech? Well, let me tell you like this. The goal of the Department of Government Efficiency is going to help cut government waste and slash regulation and bring the private sector innovation to the government. Now, what does this mean for tech jobs in your career? We're going to dive in in this video. So you're going to have to watch the entire video. But I want to get your first reaction on this because when I saw it and I heard about it and I saw that it was Elon Musk and then Vivek Ramaswamy, I said, oh, man, this dude is serious about making major changes. He is looking to make a significant change in the U.S. government by bringing in Vivek Ramaswamy and the genius Elon Musk. But check this out. The Department of Government Efficiency is a new initiative that's led by Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. And the goal is to cut wasteful spending and restructure federal agencies. And if you think about it, this is going to help reduce all of the excess spending in the government where I have friends who says at the end of the year, they get a whole bunch of money to go and buy stuff that sits in a warehouse and they don't even use at all. This is going to eliminate all of this. Or I have people who work in the government that talk about they're using old, outdated COBOL systems, guys. Um, these systems are old and outdated and they need to be updated with new technology. So it's going to bring in more technology into the government as well and get rid of the technology that is old and outdated. And not only that, it's going to get rid of a whole bunch of people that don't need to be in positions that have been sitting there warming seats for a very long time, haven't gotten fired because they got a government job. And we all know they say once you get a job, government job, you are safe for the rest of your life. That's how people take it. You are safe until you retire. It shouldn't be like that. You should be adding value because we as taxpayers are paying for your services. And the deadline for this to be done is July 4th. Now, why is the date significant? This date is significant because it is America's 250th anniversary. Independence Day, guys. 250th anniversary of America being independent. And Musk says he's going to do this. He's going to have a leaderboard that's going to show which departments, which people are using your tax dollars in a bad way. So he's going to have a leaderboard for wasteful spending. And it's going to be out there to provide transparency, but also to embarrass people, to show why people are using money to study if monkeys are male or female or in between or both. I don't want my tax dollars going towards that kind of stuff at all. I want my tax dollars going to improving the infrastructure of the United States. And many of you want the exact same thing. But the key takeaway here is that Elon Musk is going to bring his experience with managing and leading companies like Tesla and SpaceX to bring that efficiency to the government, which is something that is actually needed. And I do think that this is going to be important. Now, this could impact the tech industry. And this is how if you think about it. Deregulation. It's going to be easier for startups to innovate. If they want to innovate in something like space tech, it's going to be easier for them to create a startup and innovate. If they want to provide gasoline to some of the satellites that are in space, this is not going to have to go do a whole bunch of red tape in order for them to be able to do that. If they want to be able to provide new concrete to the roads that we drive in and provide a concrete that is flexible, whatever it is, they can do that. So faster approval, easier for startups to innovate, and it's going to revive the mergers and acquisition deals that were once on the table and got thrown out because the government says, ah, we can't have these companies being too big. Which ultimately, when you think about mergers and acquisitions, they unlock billions in capital. And venture capitalists are excited about it. They are very excited because it's going to boost the economy. It's going to be a way so that they can spur innovation. People want new things. They want competition. They want to say, oh, man, Johnny, Johnny's doing this over there. We need to be doing something very similar. Let's do it even better. But Musk calls this, and this is a quote, the Manhattan Project of Reform. If you guys don't know what the Manhattan Project is, basically was after World War II, you had 
countries like Britain and some other ones that joined forces with the United States to create nuclear technology. And um, that's what they're equating this to be. I would tell you like this, deregulation is good for innovation. But my question is, does it come with some risk? Now, that's the question I want you guys to leave in a comment. I do think that it comes from risk. You want that good balance because too much regulation is going to stop the economy and it's going to stop people from innovating and it's going to slow processes down. And before you know it, people are going to be able to catch on. Companies are going to be able to catch on to the two new ways and there's not going to be a lot of people being able to break into industries. Well, when you have a perfect balance of regulation and deregulation, kind of in between, a little oversight also, but not too much oversight, it's going to be a good way so that people can innovate without there being a whole bunch of red tape and stop, you can't do this type of a conversation going on. But the key sectors that is expected to boom is artificial intelligence, space and defense technology, infrastructure and industrial technology. These are the spaces that are expected to grow. So you're going to see growth in AI developers. So for all you individuals who are in college right now and saying, man, I don't know if computer science should be the right degree for me or MIS or computer information systems. It is still a good degree for you because they're going to need AI developers and data scientists and machine learning specialists. And in the space in defense tech sectors, you're going to need people who understand space and who understand military and weapons and all that sort of stuff. You're going to need that. And for the infrastructure and industrial technology, people want to build smart cities. They want to have renewable energy and they want automation projects and they want to do that fast. That's what they want. They want cities where you can literally don't have to worry about walking late at night and there's no cars on the road and there's a red light and you can't cross street. No, they should be able to pick up your body and say, you know what? No cars are coming. Go ahead and give him the, the light to walk so that he can get across the street and get home as fast as possible. That's the technology that is needed in this sort of environment. I would tell you like this. You need to start preparing. You need to start preparing to upskill in AI and cloud computing and cybersecurity and supply chain technology. Get your certifications. Use platforms like Coursera, AWS, Google certifications, Udemy, course careers, level careers, any of those are good platforms for you to start to upskill and do it now because this wave is going to come very, very fast. I even think blockchain is going to be a technology that's going to be needed and more in demand. And you're going to see more people gravitating towards that way and more things going to the blockchain because of the AI and the lack of authenticity and the copying that's going to be going on with AI and deep fakes and things like that. I think blockchain is going to be an area that's going to blow up. And I also think supply chain is going to be an area that continues to blow up as well. But you can also start to build your network. Join tech communities. Go to industry meetups. There's Afrotech that's going on right now in Houston. Join LinkedIn groups so that you can build your network and start talking to people about the excitement that are in these spaces. And not only that, follow the tech trend. So read your business week. Read your Bloomberg, read space articles and technology articles and look at job openings in AI, space tech, supply chain, renewable energy, artificial intelligence, all of that. If you're not sure where to start, you should check us out in our coaching programs at www.blkheights.com. We will help you and point you to the right direction for your career. Last thing I would say is this, guys. This could be a start to a major tech boom. I am very excited about it. I am optimistic about it. Are you ready to take advantage of it is what I'm asking you. Do you think that Elon Musk's role in this new administration is going to be a good thing? I personally think so. Now, a lot of people are skeptical about it because it's Elon Musk and Tesla had layoffs and SpaceX has layoffs and Twitter had layoffs. Well, at the end of the day, there are going to be some layoffs in the government as well, too. Why? Because there are a whole bunch of people sitting around in warming seats and not doing a damn thing. But at the end of the day, these people that can go and find a career just like every one of us can. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think about this whole move and Trump nominating Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy for the Department of Government Efficiency. And if you think that it's going to spur tech jobs. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, share it and subscribe for more career insights. We will see you in the next one. Peace.